Hey guys, Emma again. Welcome back to my workbench. I have been looking at some files today and I thought for a while that I've got a lot of friends and a lot of colleagues who really don't know very much about files. They pick one up to do a job and really don't know what it's called or what to order if one gets blunt or or what the use of a particular file is for. So without sort of putting too much detail into this and I could talk on files for hours there's a lot to know about them but I thought we'd just do a bit of an overview of some of the different types of files so these are metalworking files they're basically files that you would find in most shops uh, there's three different grades of basic flat files. The coarse one is called a bastard file that's fairly coarse and it's used for heavy work. It's something that you pick up to draw file or to take as much metal off as you possibly can. This one's called a second cut file which is a little bit finer. It's a medium file I guess. And a fine finishing file is called a smooth file. So there's the three grades of files. Needle files are a little bit different, but we'll get to them in a minute. As for basic shapes, this one's parallel and square. And that's called a hand file, surprisingly. These are usually square looking down on them and square looking at the side so there's no taper in them and that's quite a common file another file that we see lots of is a mill file which is this one this one's got a, a very slight taper here and it's parallel through there that's a mill file most mill files are set in single cut, so that means that they've only got teeth going in one direction, if we have a look at that. This is a warding file, and not only is it double cut, if we can see that, but there's teeth going this way, and there's also teeth from here on going that way, so it's a double cut file. Warding files generally taper down to almost a, almost a point, so they're tapered that way and they're supposed to have a little bit of taper that way but this one hasn't so that's a warding file so they're the three basic shapes and everyone's probably seen them uh, i wonder how many people know the difference between them but uh, that's what they look like now this is a half round file which is basically half round and it's cuts on both sides It's handy for filing shapes. It's pretty self-explanatory, really. That's what a half-round file looks like. This one and this one is called a three-square file. I don't know why. Really stupid name for anything. It's like saying it's a smooth file. We didn't think about this much when they were naming them, but... Um, this one's a three square or a triangular file. It's got three corners and usually a little bit of taper. So that's a fairly common file you'll find too. Now, round files, this one is called a chainsaw file or a chain file. It's, ta it's straight parallel all the way to the top so it's the same diameter top and bottom and it's for sharpening chainsaw teeth really on chainsaw chains but it's a very handy thing to have and they're very very cheap so if you're going to go out and buy some files this is a good one to have because you can file grooves and it's really handy for cutting out chain, dr chain drilling if you haven't got a milling machine it's a file that gets used a fair bit in my workshop. 
this one, which is actually a needle file, but this is called a rat's tail. That's a bit different. It's tapered all the way to the end, right to a point, a very fine point usually. And that's a rat tail file. So the difference between that one and that one, this one really isn't a rat tail file. It's tapered all the way, but this one's got a point on it like a rat tail. So that's another shape. Another one that I use a lot, mainly because I bought a couple of boxes of them, is this one. That's a knife file. It's um, sharp on one edge and it's got a safety edge on the back. So files come in different lengths. The engineering files. This is four inch and it's usually measured from here to here. It's the effective cutting length. This one is a six inch. And this one is an eight inch. There's a couple of other engineering type files. Sometimes you can find a, a square file and they're well worth having in bigger sizes. It's handy too if you've if you've got a square file, if you can get two of them, if you pick up a couple, like this one. So if you touch it on a stone and you make a safety edge on three sides, it makes a fairly useful file out of that one. So if you get an old one with still a bit of cut in it, it's handy to modify some of them. This one's got a point on it for some reason. Uh, obviously I had to get in somewhere that was pretty small, so I've I've ground two sides off so that it... I don't know if you can see that. I've ground two sides off so it'll go in. Quite a lot of my files have safety edges on them. And... They've been re-ground. And they really are just a disposable commodity. They're consumable, I guess. Older files, if you can get them, seem to last. If you can get new old stock files, they last a lot longer than, than some of the more modern ones. But to be honest, if they're looked after, they can last a few years. But eventually you've got to chuck them out. So buy the best you can and, and look after them. And they, they will do you for the amount of work you do in a home workshop anyway. They last a fair while. So that's engineering files. Now if we move across here, these are Swiss needle files and there's quite a few shapes of these. Usually they've got parallel handles with knurled ends. Um, that one's a knife file. That one's a, ward a warding file with a taper on it. This one's square and a rat's tail. And this one's a a pillar file or a flat file. The Swiss call it a pillar file. So these pictures I found show the basic shapes. There's a pillar and a three square. And a crossing file. And a barrette file. An edge file and a half round. and a oval and a knife file. Needle files are sold in, si in number sizes. Usually O is the, the coarsest and number 10 or number 12 or number 8 is usually the finest. So usually you, you specify that and shorter ones or smaller files will usually go down to finer sizes. You'll probably find that if you buy 160 millimeter files, something like that, six, seven inch needle files that you'll probably only get a number four. You won't get, you won't be able to buy a number eight or a number 10 file. And if you buy 100 millimeter ones, you'll be able to get them right down to, from, from double zero, right down to, to number eight or number 10. These files are called Riffler files. They've got a bend in them. Very, very useful for, for cleaning out odd shaped castings, things like that. This one's just a, a pillar shape, it's square on the end. This one's got a bit of a taper in him that way.
This one's got a curve in him, whereas this one's got a shout, just a flat point, which is handy to get in over something or or to get in a hole. This one's half round. It's actually more a crossing file with two different two different diameters on it. This one's triangular. That one's a half round one. And that one's a square one. So they're fairly useful things to, to have. I don't know very much about these ones. They're marked Germany. Um, they were a gift from, from a very good friend. And they haven't seen a lot of hard service yet. But they are useful things to have when you need them. I've got two sets of these, and this set that we've looked at stay at home, they're Swiss. We've got another set at work that you, I use pretty well constantly, and they're sort of okay, mostly too coarse, but good files are expensive. Australian dollars, you'd probably be looking at $40 each of these, and they're worth looking after but these do last a long time in in the sort of work that you do in in miniature a long time ago I bought this set of diamond rifflers I found them the other day when I was cleaning up I was thinking why did I buy them I don't think they were very expensive they're probably only about ten dollars Now, that one's not quite so obvious, but the problem with them is that they're Chinese and no one's put a lot of time or effort into making them. Now, they've got a nice sharp corner right in the middle of the cutting edge, which is neither here nor used to ornament. For rifflers, you really want either a nice curve like this one or flat like this one. There's no real in between. This one with the bend in the middle of the cutting surface is just a pain in the neck. I've never really used these more than about once. Um, they're way too coarse to do any good work anyway. And they've got pla crappy plastic handles. Probably they're a waste of money. So buy the best you can afford. That's sort of, I guess, the, the thing. So anyway, I hope that's been of some use to him, to everyone. Thanks for watching. I haven't even touched on on how to use a file or what sort of jobs for each one or what sort of material or cleaning files or any of that stuff. Maybe we'll do another one. How to draw file and how to radius file and how to keep them nice and square, all those sort of things. But that's a pretty much a an overview of how and what they they look like and what you call them all without being too long-winded thanks for watching guys and thanks for subscribing and thanks for following along with what I do I really appreciate it more soon